Hi, and welcome to another video from visionvideos.com. This time we'll be focusing on translations. There are several types of translation. Our first example will focus on reflection. A good way to remember reflection is its mirroring. It's simply as if we're placing a mirror along the defined line. In our example, our line is y equals x. This is because the value for our y coordinate, that's the vertical line, will always be equal to that of the x. We see here that 1 meets 1, 2 meets 2, 3 meets 3, all the way down the line, and this will always be the case. If we're asked to reflect our shape using y equals x, then we can simply find the corners of our shape and use a protractor to measure its distance from the line at 90 degrees and double that. This crosses the line to find the corresponding corner of our new shape. We find that the closer or further the point from the line, the closer or further it will be from its corresponding point, as you can see here. In this example, we're using the squares to count. However, if you're not given squares in your exam, then be very careful to measure accurately using your ruler. Now we have all our points matched up, let's continue to draw out our new shape. If we remove the lines, we can see that the shape certainly looks like it's been reflected, and when practicing in real life, it may be useful to use a small mirror to physically compare the drawn shape and the reflected shape and assess how correct you were. Our next example is rotations, which is another word for turning a shape around a defined point. Our example here tells us to rotate our triangle clockwise about the coordinate 2, 2. Clockwise is the direction in which the hands on the clock turn. If we're to imagine our graph here is a clock, then we can see 12 would be here, 3 here, 6 here, 9 here, and therefore that's the direction we'll be working in. Now, we've been given the point 2, 2, so remember along the x-axis first, and then up, and we'll mark the point here. We can draw a line from our closest corner point to our marked coordinate, although any point will work using this method. Now, we know our direction, and we have an accurate line to work with, then adding 90 degrees and drawing a line of the same length from our coordinate will give us the starting point for our rotated triangle. We can do the same again, or we can simply measure using a ruler or count using our graph paper units the distance and direction from our first point to our second point in our triangle A. In our example, we see it's four units up our y-axis, and at a 90 degree rotation, we know that it will end up along our x-axis instead. So, we count four units from our newly marked point along the x-axis. From the second point of triangle A, we can see that the final point of our triangle is two units negative from x, which, on a 90 degree rotation, will mean upwards, as we've just turned it. We'll mark that from our second defined point of our second shape, to form the final point of our triangle. Now all that's left to do is join our new marks. If you're asked to label your new shape, do so now. When practicing, tracing paper may also help. Finally, we'll take a look at enlargements. Enlargements is as it sounds. It's increasing the shape by a given scale factor. Scale factors work like percentages. A scale factor of 1 is the same as the original shape, or 100% of that shape. A scale factor 2, however, will be 2 times as large as the original shape, or 200%, and so on. You can also get scale factors of a half, which would be half the original shape. Also remember, it's not just the size that changes, but the distance from a given point also. Our example question here asks us to enlarge a triangle by scale factor 2, and this will be from the centre of enlargement, C, which is already marked on our graph paper. So first what we do, from our centre point C, draw lines using a ruler and measure the distance between the centre point and each point on our triangle. In real life it's best to write these measurements down on the side for extra working out points, and to know that you're correct. Now we have our original distances to points measured and the direction they're going in, we can take a look at what the question is asking us to do. In this case, a scale factor 2, which we should understand now, is 2 times as large, which also makes it 2 times the distance from the centre of enlargement. So if we go over our original lines from the center, we double their lengths to define the points of our enlarged shape. When we have our points marked, we can simply connect them using our ruler to form our new triangle. Now to make a final assessment of if we're correct, we first measure the distance from the center point to our new point, and we ask, is it two times the same length as our original? If so, we can move on and measure all the lengths of the sides of our new shape, and ensure that they are also twice the length of the original triangle. Thanks for watching, and again, please subscribe for more Revision Maths videos, or for more free revision materials, go to revisionmaths.com.